Now, I've stayed at a lot of Premier Inns over the years and they usually are my first choice whenever I travel because they're usually the cheapest, most convenient, best located option. However, for this trip, I needed to be as close as possible to King's Cross Station because I'm down in London for three days for two different events that are on completely opposite sides of the city and I'm coming in and out by train. So I just wanted to be really close here so that at least I had a central location and then could go off to the... It all made sense to me. Well, as you can see, I would struggle to be much closer to King's Cross Station. There is a Premier Inn just down the road, but it's really expensive. One of the most expensive Premier Inns I've ever seen. But behind me, we have a hub by Premier Inn. Same company, different product, much better price. Let's go and have a little explore, shall we? And also ideally located prepped opposite for breakfast. So although in a hub by Premier Inn, you don't get the normal traditional Premier Inn all you can eat buffet breakfast. In my days of trying to eat a little bit healthier like I do these days, being able to pop into Pret across the road and get myself an acai bowl in the morning is probably the healthy option. But we're just around here on the left hand side there is a bar so you can see there's a bar in there where they do serve meals they have breakfast you check in i've already checked in but you check in on these machines here and um, when i checked in i didn't speak to a person at any point and then it's through those doors to get to the rooms i realize i don't have my key handy so i need to dig my key out i'll i'll meet you in there it's probably going to be dark because spoilers i recorded the next bit at half past 11 last night when i got here it's too dark to film outside them. I'll see you in there. Right, I think I am two floors underground. This is the third door. I've needed to use my key card on to get through. But this is the corridor that I'm on. I'm having to be quiet. It is gone 11.30 at night and I'm arriving at this hotel. But this is my room here, number 22, which uh, has these really cool lights outside to indicate where you do not disturb, all that kind of stuff. No cardboard here. Very snazzy map. <laughs> I do like a map of the local area up on the wall. Long time viewers may remember that me and Anna stayed in a hotel like this over on Brick Lane probably five or six years ago now. It's a long, long time ago. Um, but we are underground, no windows, two floors underground, just around the back of King's Cross Station. Um, I can't show you out there now because it is the middle of the night and it's really dark and I'm very scared to be walking through the streets of London on my own at this time of night but I'm sure future Kev in the morning has headed out there to give you an idea of just how close this is to King's Cross Station. I actually pulled into St Pancras and it was less than a 10 minute walk to get to this hotel. Did have to walk past a normal Premier Inn to get here but that was about twice the price. Let's have a look around the room, shall we? So immediately when you come in to the right, you have a couple of hooks. Um, as you can see, my hoodie has already taken up one of those hooks and this is where the air conditioning lives as well, which is doing sterling work in the middle of August or early August. And um, there's also a bottle opener for those of you inclined to want a bottle. On the left-hand side, we have hairdryer already uh, plumbed in and I guess somewhere to plug in your straighteners as well. And then a mirror to stand in and do your hair so I can make sure my hair is all blow dried and beautiful in the morning. Behind this, it's all very clever the way it's all um, squished together. Um, you have the nearest thing to a wardrobe in this room, four coat hangers to hang a few bits and bobs on and a little bit of shelving up the top. Very much getting similar vibes to that tiny little hotel I stayed in at Gatwick Airport not so long ago. Um, there's certainly more room in this one. Seems a lot more modern, a lot better thought out. So there we have the bed. Underneath the bed, we have storage for the suitcase. And I guess this is gonna be the safe. No, that is just a drawer, so no safe. This is a little workstation that slides in and out. So if you don't want it out and you want a bit more room to walk around, you can push it in. But if you do need to do some work, you can pull that out. It becomes a desk and you can bring the chair down to go in front of it and use that as a little workstation. It does come out further, but my suitcase is currently blocking the path. We then have the, uh, the TV up on the wall, which immediately warns you about 
the fact that we are two, two floors underground. We're on level negative two according to the elevator. There is no phone signal down here at all. But in what is quite a nice touch for a Premier Inn, the Wi-Fi is actually included. It's not extra and it's decent Wi-Fi. So jumped on that, no codes, no registration or anything needed. If you're in the building, you can jump on the Wi-Fi. It's no extra cost and it's decent Wi-Fi. I don't know how fast just yet, but I could like go on Twitter and text Anna and let her know I was here. And frankly, that's all I really need to be able to do. And then as mentioned before, we have the nice little uh, art slash map on the wall that shows where we are. This is the King's Cross one. So is this a unique map to each one of these hotels? Is King's Cross on there? My London geography when it's drawn like this. Is it, oh, there's, so there's, oh, there's King's Cross at the top. St. Pancras, Islington, so we're at the top there. I think this is the same map in all of them because when me and Anna were in the Brick Lane one, um, which again, I don't know when, it doesn't matter. It's a cool map slash piece of art. We do have plugs next to the bed, which I think that's the only plug next to the bed. We've got a little control panel there for the lights, the air conditioning, the the do not disturb sign on the on the walls, various different types of light. Don't know if we can. Okay, so we can make it a little brighter in here. Did I just make that dimmer? We want it brighter, please. There we go, that's much better. One slight concern, and it says a secret plug down here. There is not. Is where I'm gonna plug in my CPAP machine. I guess I'm gonna to have to plug it in there and just have it on the bed next to me. Normally I would want that on a shelf. It's actually quite a narrow bed. If me and Anna were here together, being two uh, more rotund humans, that might be quite a tight squeeze. Um, it's a lot narrower than the bed that we have at home. I think we'd, we'd argue. They haven't set the bed up either, which is interesting. Not the bed not made, which I guess means I don't have to do that typical hotel thing. I'm having to unpull it out of the bottom. So I guess it doesn't really matter. It's just a bit of an odd thing. And then this is the, uh, the light built into the wall that's supposed to give you the impression that it is a window with a blind down and daylight coming through. So you don't go completely bonkers being underground and having no windows. I actually think it's quite effective, quite like it. Um, I think we can change the color of that as well. Although I can't work out how, so maybe I'm making that up. What you can do on here is change the temperature for the air conditioning, turn the air conditioning off completely, or you've got the button to press do not disturb or do not make up room. So if we put do not disturb on, what that should do is, if we come out here, there you go. It's turned on my do not disturb sign outside, which is much better than the little cardboard hanger that goes over the door handle, because they fall off. People move them. That, there's no arguing with that. People know not to disturb me, but now, now do not expect to be disturbed. So there we have the chair, which my bag is currently living on. And then we've got our little bathroom. Bathroom might be generous, shower room. I mean, it's big enough. Look, there's me over there. Um, I can access the sink. I can access the toilet. We have the necessary number of towels. Fancy Bayliss and Harding soaps and whatnot as well. And then nice waterfall shower. Very much the mark of a hotel I want to stay in when we have a waterfall shower and a butthole shower as well, and more of the Bayless and Harding stuff in here. And um, that does slide across. I've stayed in a lot of hotels lately where you can't actually slide the shower door across, but we can actually get some privacy in there, both from there and then from the bathroom door as well. Although there is massive windows up above. So you're gonna see the person you're with showering, but to be fair, I don't think they do twin rooms, so you're probably gonna be fairly okay seeing the person you're traveling with showering. Another nice touch, bottle of water. Complimentary bottle of water, which I very much need, having turned up at the hotel at 11.30 at night. There are a couple of shops that I've walked past on the way in, a little Tesco Express and that kind of thing. I was gonna nip out and grab some water, but don't need to now. Have some here, which is marvelous. Now, of course, this wouldn't be a hotel room review if I didn't review the bed. The lighting is terrible from this angle, I apologize, but you're gonna get the idea if we just move the duvet out of the way for the moment and 
see how soft this bed is. That is pretty comfortable, although my feet are on the desk at the end of the bed. So probably make a note, don't leave my laptop on there overnight because I am just going to kick it off. Um, and you can see it's, it is pretty narrow. By the time I plug my CPAP machine in and got that next to me on the bed, there is no room for an Anna in this room, which is uh, worth bearing in mind if you've had one too many dinners like I have. Also, nice touch that I can just see on the wall there now, as well as the two plug sockets. There's a USB socket under there as well, which big thumbs up for that. Now, of course, the bit we've all been waiting for, the cost. I have stayed in some very expensive hotels recently, and this is not one of them. This, the reason I'm actually here, I don't need to be in London until tomorrow morning. That's why I've come down at 11.30 at night because it was actually cheaper for me to get the train leaving home at 10.20, 10.30ish in the evening and stay in this hotel than it was to travel down on the train in the morning, which is partly because it was a stupidly expensive train fare to travel down rush hour on a Friday morning for some reason. It's gonna cost me about 120 pounds on the train tomorrow morning, which doesn't seem right. I don't normally get trains. That seems very expensive, um, but it's only cost me eight pounds on the train to come down at this time of night. And then the hotel for tonight, 115 pounds. I've actually booked for two nights because I have consecutive things that I need to do down here in London, um, but all in, it's cost less than £240, which when you compare that to the Gatwick um, Hotel, that was more than that for one night, I think. And if you also compare it to the Premier Inn down the road, I mentioned as I came out of King's Cross, you basically, if you know the King's Cross area, you come out of the station, straight in front of you, you've got five guys. I can't, I've looped round to the left and gone down that road, down the side of the station, basically walking down the side of the station where all the restaurants and takeaways are. The first road on the right down there, there is a Premier Inn. That was twice the price of this hotel. One street further along, you have this hub behind it. It's hub by Premier Inn, so same company, half the price. And actually, you know what? I think I prefer this. I like these quirky little capsule-ish type modern hotels more than the traditional big hotel big bed in the middle this is fine it's obviously small if you were if you were here as a couple it would be very cramped but for just me on my own when i'm going to be out all day tomorrow i'm going to be checking out the next morning so i'm literally just in here to sleep shower and store my stuff this is absolutely perfect and the price is spot on as well so keep your eye out for Premier Inn hubs. They are springing up across the country, particularly in London. I know there's one that's opened just a little bit further out from where I am now in Camden, which has just opened very so recently, it's not even showing up on Google Maps yet, which is why I didn't book that one, but that one was even cheaper. That was like 60 pounds for the night for one that's just opened. And that's probably a 20 minute walk from King's Cross Station, which if I'd have been confident of finding it on Google Maps, I absolutely would have saved even more money and gone to that one. But I can't complain. It's one of the cheapest hotel rooms I've booked this year in a perfect location. I'm meeting Sheepdog at King's Cross Station at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. I can just roll out of bed at 7.30. There's a prep next door for my breakfast and uh, I'll be ready to attack the day. Spot on. And that concludes the first hotel room review here on the new travel channel. If you are new to me off the back of this channel, um, I did have a previous channel where I uploaded loads of this stuff. I'll link to a playlist of my previous hotel reviews down below, um, but expect more of this kind of thing over the coming weeks and months. Um, hotel reviews, travel vlogs, travel days, events, like this, this, this stuff. We've got a lot of cool stuff planned, so, Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, leave a thumbs up as well if you've enjoyed this one. It really does help out, especially with a new channel like this one. And thank you very much for watching.